Hey folks, Dan from DNN Custom Creations. Um, I mentioned on the last video that it's been a while. Uh, I didn't realize I was going to have to make one <laughs> in a couple of days after the last one. But I'm cutting out some uh, 3 16 uh, plate, 7 gauge, uh, to, for a, a base of a table, custom uh, base that I'm making. And I cut these two panels out. They're uh, supposed to be rectangular and they're supposed to be pretty uh, pretty true. And I didn't realize uh, just how off I am uh, from being true. Now, in the Y direction, uh, obviously it follows the rails. And I you know, worked real hard when I built this table to make sure it was square, make sure the rails were okay. And I've measured and you know verified that everything's parallel. And so what has to be off is the X direction. And uh, let me show you um, what I'm finding. I'm going to turn you uh, facing down here and see if we can't measure. So I've just got a, a square and lining it up on one side. And you can see that I am off, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch on the length of this which is about 24, about two feet. And so I would gather that my um, X direction is off. And so I wanted to see if in fact that was confirmed and obviously try and fix it. <clears throat> so let me uh, uh, take you over there and I'll show you what I found. Okay, um, uh, on uh, one side of the machine, right, it depends how you're looking at it. If I'm if I uh, facing the uh, torch, uh, then I say I'm in the front of the machine. So I've uh, just parked the X axis, and I am measuring to. I'm going to use uh, the edge of this block. And again, these four corners are straight, so I'm I'm pretty comfortable that using these corners, uh, I'm, I'm good. And you can see, I'm not sure if you can see there, but the edge of this bracket is right at 34 inches. And I'm hooked over the, the edge of the rail. I'm not sure you can see that. Um, I've just uh, basically you know, hooked the backside of, the, of that X axis rail. All right, now let's take a look at the other side. See if I can get you set up here. I'll probably kick the tripod a couple times. Apologize ahead of time, but let me see if I can get around it here and get myself a measurement. So remember, we're sitting at 34 inches on the right-hand side. And let's just see what we got using the same method on the left-hand side. And I'm not sure if you can see that, uh, but I am off at least an eighth of an inch. Uh, so what I need to do is loosen this x-axis rail and adjust it so I've got an, a, the same dimension on both sides and see if that won't uh, correct my error. All right, so let me uh, get set up to do that, see if we can adjust that out. All right, I actually made the adjustments off camera. I didn't think you'd want to uh, see all the time wasted, but to hear basically what it is. On each end of the rail, there are uh, three nuts that basically hold that rail onto the, um, your bearing block that uh, rotates back, uh, back and forth. This one, the one under here, and there is one right there at the end, uh, right here. And so uh, loosen those up on both sides. And uh, actually, I left the other side tight first. I loosened this side up because I knew it was uh, needed to be moved. It needed to be moved backwards. And I pushed it back as far as it would go. Measured it, it still wasn't enough. So then I had to go to the other side and move it as well in the opposite direction to try and uh, get the same measurement. And let's uh, see if I can walk around. We'll take a look at what that measurement is now. I'm not sure you'll be able to actually see it. But we are, um, you're looking.
looking at it with some parallax, but it's, uh, uh, it's about 3 sixteenths uh, shorter than 3 quarters of an inch. So we did the same thing on the other side. And we are at the same value. So are we square now? Well, um, obviously these plates, oh, I'm using them as a reference edge, but obviously they can move a little bit too. And I, I haven't loosened them up to see what kind of slop, but they could not, they may not be the same on both sides. Uh, so I've got to cut some more plates, a little different sizes, but the same, I need to have them rectangular. And so what I'll do is I'll cut those out and I'll measure them and we'll see if we've saw, solved our problem. There's really no way of mounting, say, a dial indicator and transversing that in the X direction back and forth because you have nothing to measure against. There's no true uh, reference edge uh, in order to measure against. Now, um, I could probably use maybe the edge of the table and just say, I'm going to assume that's the reference edge and just see how much it moves. But uh, I think what I'll do is I'll just cut out some more stuff and see how well we are. And if it's off, I'll just uh, tweak it until we get it uh, back square. All right, so uh, I will make some cuts uh, probably a little later today, and I'll try and edit those into this uh, video so we can see if I've made it better or worse. All right, thanks. I'll talk to you later. Okay, after making the adjustment, I've, uh, I've cut another panel, and let's see if we've made any improvement. Uh, this is the direction uh, that is in the X. This is in the Y. And you can see we still have a little bit of play, but it is a whole lot better. We've probably taken out 70% of the error. Now, the problem is the adjustment, uh, I'm at the max adjustment. I've, I've, I've moved one side as far back as I can and the other side as far forward as I can. So in order to take out the rest of this error, we've got to do something else. Let me take you over and uh, show you what the issue is. Okay, so uh, obviously one of these lead screws uh, attached to the bearing block on one side and, and you know there's another one on the other side. What I've done is I've moved it uh, all the way as forward as I can until the bearing is right up against uh, this stop and I want to verify on the other side that it's the same way. And sure enough is uh, one of these bearings is actually touching uh, on this side of, the, uh, uh, of those blocks. So we know that we're pretty square, um, but regardless, even though it looks like it's square, we're still getting a slight uh, angle or slight uh, cut that's not straight. So our option is to um, loosen the lead screw followers turn the lead screw enough to make up for that difference and then tighten it all back down again. So we're basically going to have to adjust one side or the other to compensate for that error. Um, it's going to be a, a you know, trial and, and error type of an adjustment, but uh, that's what we're going to have to do. So we'll obviously turn the controller off so that there's no power to those lead screws. We will uh, loosen the, uh, we could probably loosen the um, lead screw uh, coupler and rotate the lead screw enough to make up for that difference. Uh, that's probably what I will do on one side or the other, and I'll decide which, which one. And, and the way that I will know <laughs> that I've moved it enough is I will uh, probably back off the bearing uh, by the amount that I think the error is, and then turn that lead screw until that uh, bearing actually touches again. So let me uh, work on that. We'll see what the status was. Okay, folks, uh, scratch basically what I was thinking because there's an actual easier way. <clears throat> and um, so let me, let me show you. I don't have to loosen the coupler. I don't have to loosen any of the lead, lead screw followers, etc. Um, because our machine doesn't actually home, when you first turn it on, home and find true zero, 
every time you turn it on, it's going to think that it's at, you know, some location. And you basically tell it where you think it is. Um, and so let me show you what I've done. So I have obviously um, turned the controller off. And uh, I set it up so that both on both sides, this bearing right here, the gap between that was zero. It was actually touching. And you can see that I can turn now with that controller off, I can set that to whatever I want. So it was touching. I knew that this side needed to go back about, you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch. And so I just turned the lead screw until it was about a sixteenth of an inch with the other side still um, in position. When I turn that controller on now, it doesn't change. And so it now is at its new reference position. And I can turn the controller on and off. I can restart uh, the fi uh, fire control all day long. And it's going to keep that relative position as long as I don't turn those lead screws while it's off. It's going to keep that same position. Um, and in fact, I'm kind of wondering if possibly, you know, in the past, I might have crashed this thing a couple of times and um, that that might have led to my problem because I thought when I set this thing up, it was pretty square. I thought I had verified that, but that's been, you know, a year and a half ago. So what's a, and so, I, you know, I'm thinking that these new, um, Oh, the, uh, um, what do you call it? <laughs> the, uh, oh, the, the uh, switches, uh, the end, end switches that are, you know, the limit switches that they're offering now. That will hopefully solve this issue. Now, what I don't know is if those limit switches are also going to come with the ability to zero on home, uh, which would be a great thing. But regardless, it will keep it from crashing and potentially leading to the same problem. So now that I've made this adjustment, uh, I've got another panel to cut and uh, we'll see if that didn't solve the problem. Okay, after making that uh, lead screw uh, adjustment, rotation adjustment, let me show you uh, what we've got. I am very close. Uh, there's probably oh, a 64th of an inch that I could still correct, but uh, it has solved the problem. Now, so in hindsight, um, I probably should have done that originally instead of moving the uh, the rail. Although you, you need to be careful if you make too much of a change in that lead screw, you know, from one side to the other, then you could wind up with those bearing blocks getting in a little bit of a bind. So maybe it's still good to uh, use the rail, adjust the rail best you can to take that out and then make the last final adjustment uh, by doing that lead screw trick. <coughs> it goes back to my, um, belief that uh, limit switches will help because I, I'm probably, what has happened is I've crashed this thing. Uh, maybe the, the lead screw um, got, you know, the, time, the steps got out a little bit and it wound up a little bit out of adjustment. And I think the uh, limit switches that they're offering or going to be offering here another month or so at Langmire uh, as well as it'd be nice when to turn this thing on that it would go back and home itself uh, each time so it, uh, um, you know, this kind of thing wouldn't happen again. Because even if you got out of step, uh, it would go back and rehome itself, set everything to zero, and you wouldn't have these kind of problems. Anyway, I hope this has helped. If you um, got any questions, uh, put them in the comments. Thanks. Dan, Dan from DNN Customer Creations. I thought I'd tell you uh, why I'm cutting these panels out. Uh, this is for a uh, base of a table. And, uh, and so these panels are obviously need to be pretty square. And so that's actually how I discovered the issue is uh, when I put the, uh, one of the panels on, it, had, uh, it was obviously not square. Anyway, so that uh, Give you an idea of what I'm working on. Okay, thanks.